When using a computer, you may have, at some point, noticed that black on the display is never truly black. It's a sort of hazy grey, which results in images being somewhat flat and lifeless as any dark areas get washed out. This of course isn't a problem for web browsing and general office tasks, but it leaves a lot to be desired for anything else, like gaming or watching movies. Now this issue actually occurs due to the way most computer screens generate an image, which is by selectively blocking light from an always lit backlight using an LCD panel. If white is requested, the LCD panel will let most of the light through. But when an image is requested, it will attempt to block the light at varying degrees across the panel to recreate the image. When it comes to dark areas though, it can't completely block all the light, so some of the backlight inevitably leaks through, washing out the image. Some displays fix this by using newer display technologies, which I'll be going into later, but the problem is that they are really expensive. We're talking $1,000 to $3,000. And I don't know about you guys, but I wouldn't really want to spend that much just for a better looking gaming experience. So, is there a way we can improve things without breaking the bank? Maybe. As I've just explained, the way most computer screens work is by selectively blocking light from an always lit backlight. So can't we just add an additional LCD panel in front of it to multiply this light blocking function? Well, here I've got my old gaming monitor. It's nothing special, it's just a full HD panel with a high refresh rate, but as it's quite old now, I've managed to pick up another one for cheap. So let's take this one's panel out and put it in front of the original screen and see what happens. The process for this starts out being fairly straightforward, requiring the back panel to first be removed and any cables unclipped. Unfortunately, things get a bit trickier when it comes to the panel itself, as it is rather delicate and has been stuck in place with some kind of foam around its perimeter. Thankfully though, using a plastic wedge helps to peel it away, which finally frees the LCD panel. To check that it still works, I can reconnect it to the electronics, and thankfully it appears to be okay, and we can still see an image from it as long as it's in front of a light source. But what if we place it in front of the original screen? Surprisingly, it goes completely black. It's still displaying an image, as shown by this handheld light, but for some reason the light from the lower screen gets entirely blocked, and it will just not shine through the second panel. This odd and somewhat disappointing behaviour is actually a side effect of how LCD panels work, as they rely on light polarisation to block light and generate an image. This means that both panels contain polarisation layers, so when one panel is placed in front, they unintentionally interfere with each other and block all light from passing through, as they're not intended to be used like this. So it might appear that this project has hit a bit of a dead end, but thankfully that isn't the case, because essentially all we have to do is disrupt the polarisation between these two layers. Now you can actually get specialist depolarizing films that can do this, but they are really hard to get. So after much experimentation, I've actually found that the cheapest and most effective way of doing it at home is to simply use tracing paper. As soon as the tracing paper is slid behind the top panel, the image becomes visible. This happens because the tracing paper causes the light to be rescattered in all directions, effectively depolarizing it so that it doesn't get blocked by the second panel. However, here we can see our second challenge. It is somewhat dim. This really demonstrates the key problem with this method, which is simply that it's just not that efficient, because the light has to travel through two LCD panels as well as the paper, so a lot is lost in the process. However, it is something that we can overcome with brute force by simply designing a much brighter backlight. Now, the original backlight was basically just a strip of LEDs shining up into a sheet of acrylic, which is designed to spread the light out with the help of various diffusion layers. These can't be made to run any brighter without burning them up, so my plan is to simply add more of them. LED strips are perfect for this as they're super cheap, and can be arranged into a big grid that can be mounted behind the display. Another option is to use pre-made panels, which are a bit quicker to wire up. As you can see, I've mounted mine onto some flat heat sinks, which may be excessive, but they will give us some more brightness headroom if we need to drive them particularly hard, as I'm really not sure how bright we need them to be yet. This is just a prototype after all. 
One issue with using LEDs in this way to shine directly into the back of the LCD panel is that they produce points of light. So to spread this out to act more like the original backlight, I'm just using more tracing paper. But as you can see, in order for it to diffuse the light properly, it needs to be several centimeters away from the LEDs. To hold this at the required distance, it's necessary to screw in place some side panels to the back, which gives us a front edge to mount a sheet of acrylic onto. This serves to help to keep the tracing paper flat, so essentially we've built a nice little light box. This works really well to diffuse the light, but how does it perform with the first LCD panel in front of it? Well, it looks pretty good to me, especially as it's not at full brightness in this shot. So now it's time to add the second panel, which is where the magic will hopefully start to happen. This of course needs to be extracted from the second monitor, and before it gets placed on top, I need to make sure that a sheet of tracing paper goes down first, to act as a depolarizing filter, after which the second LCD panel can be added. Once it's neatened up with some plastic trim, it looks surprisingly okay, although we're not quite done yet, as we need to find somewhere to mount the rest of the electronics. I've made a backplate out of a scrap piece of aluminium for this, with the intention being to screw it to the original stand. This gives me somewhere to screw in place a power supply, which is just a cheap enclosed type from eBay, as well as somewhere to screw the original display driver boards as well. As you can see, there are two of these, one for each LCD panel. So with it all together, the final thing to do is add a few precautionary fans to help to keep it all cool if necessary. What a beast! Although it's quite thick, from the front it looks pretty ordinary. Hopefully though, its image quality will be far from ordinary, so we'll test it out after a quick ad from Huel. Huel Black Edition is a convenient and tasty way to have a nutritionally complete meal fast. It's entirely plant-based with ingredients such as flax seeds, pea protein and tapioca flour. And for additional nutritional goodness, all of this is complemented with 26 essential vitamins and minerals. This makes for a high fiber, high protein, low carb meal that's completely free from artificial sweeteners and flavorings. It's super quick to prepare as well. Just add two scoops of it to 500 milliliters of water, give it a good shake, and you're all set with a tasty, nutritionally complete meal. There are plenty of flavours to choose from, and it's very cost effective, as it works out to be 186 per meal, which is less than some people pay for a morning coffee. So click the link in the description if you'd like to order some Huel for yourself and try it out. So it's now the moment we've all been waiting for. How does a DIY dual LCD monitor perform, and what can it bring to the table? Let's find out. As we've effectively got two displays to drive, it's necessary to use an HDMI splitter to ensure that they get an identical signal. By the way, before we begin, it's worth noting that using a camera to record any LCD screen results in some weird artifacts that aren't visible to the naked eye, and they show up as weird hashes and rainbows. There's nothing I can do about this unfortunately, so try to look past it and pardon any out of focus shots which have helped to mitigate the issue. Anyway, upon booting it up, the first impression is wow, that's a lot of contrast. But I'm quickly distracted by text, where there's a sort of weird softening to it due to the tracing paper that sits between the two panels, blurring out the rear panel a bit. To describe the effect, it's almost like adding a mild drop shadow in Photoshop, but on close inspection it's actually not too far off pixel level dimming, with only mild blooming showing itself on white pixels on a black background. Still, this mostly affects office tasks, which this monitor isn't really built for anyway, so let's power up some games. Here, the level of contrast that the dual LCDs provide is strikingly obvious, with dark areas of the image being inky black, and it's a night and day difference compared to a traditional LCD display. Activities like this is where this monitor really comes into its own, and it looks incredibly rich. Another bonus that I wasn't anticipating is how vibrant the colours are. Because both LCD panels have colour filters, their purity is effectively multiplied too, and I don't think I've ever seen such a vibrant display. 
It's no wonder, I suppose, that this technique is used in professional colour grading displays, and it's worth noting that it's not at all like increasing the contrast setting on a TV. It has instead literally increased the difference between the darkest and lightest parts of the image, giving it a naturally higher contrast ratio without having to force it, so much so that it's actually quite hard to capture on camera. With a standard LCD screen in shot though, it makes it really obvious how well our DIY dual layer version is performing. Wild. It's not all wonderful news however, there is a major drawback, power consumption. The backlight alone uses over 250 watts, and despite this the monitor is by no means bright, it's actually dimmer than the original screens were capable of going by quite a long way. Which means that you can't properly appreciate HDR content for example, and I think that this is the real reason why dual LCD displays haven't caught on. They just aren't necessarily a good idea. Although looking purely at the costs to build a DIY one, it still appears to be a compelling option. Assuming you have a base monitor already, the costs break down to what's shown on screen. Alternative technologies do exist though. At the cheaper end of the scale you can get a backlit zone dimming LCD display, which selectively dims the brightness of the backlight over certain dark areas instead of attempting to fully block it. They do suffer from an annoying level of blooming though, which I personally really dislike, but at least they are bright and good for office tasks too. Of course, the ultimate display technology is OLED, which has been around for years in TVs but has only recently become an option for computer monitors. They have perfect black level performance as they can turn off each pixel independently if necessary, but they are very expensive and can potentially suffer from image retention so it might not last as long as needed. So despite its inefficiency, I'm actually staggered with what we've been able to accomplish here. Even a few years ago, this kind of image quality on any kind of computer monitor would be pretty staggering, so uh, that we've managed to do it DIY makes it all the more special. Now, um, I do have a few ideas as to how to make it more efficient and therefore brighter, and I've posted about it on the DIY Perks forum if you do want to have a go at building one yourself. But other than that, I'm Matt, you've been watching DIY Perks, and I hope to see you next time. Goodbye for now.